Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back. You're watching Towards the Origin, and our tonight's topic for discussion is nurturing, chil nurturing children. In discussion with Sheikh Qadi Lutfur Rahman, the Imam and the Khatib of the famously known mosque region, Spark Mosque. Sheikh, there's a question that I wanted to ask you before we went to the break. We discussed about the halal source of halal income of our parents. Mm -hmm. Now, we would want our children to understand the importance of halal and tayyib, mm -hmm. and we want them. Mm -hmm. to earn in a halal manner. We do know from an example, if a dad is a smoker, he would never want his children to be a smoker. Mm -hmm. So, A, I'm telling my children, I want to educate or inculcate the habit or importance of earning halal. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, as a parent, he or she themselves are not within that track. Exactly. Now, how can we balance this? Because it's like some sort of double standards are being placed yes, here. I mean, uh, simply like if we want our children to consume halal, then we have to uh, make ourselves used to, or we have to uh, make habit uh, of or ada of eating halal food by ourselves, because otherwise, simply people, uh, the children won't listen. Because uh, uh, Allah the Almighty said in the Holy Quran that all you believe, why do you say something that you do not do? And children are clever, as I said earlier. They know, they understand. I uh, remember teaching. Um, some children uh, back in the days and uh, children used to say, oh, my mom's telling me to do this, but why does she do it? She herself does it. Just to add a bit, mm -hmm. certain instances where we have all uh, seen such sort of things happening where a phone call comes from a dad mm -hmm. or mom and then the children picks up the phone yeah. and for a particular reason, the parents might not be um, quite uh, reluctant to answer Kin. that particular call. Mm -hmm. They might tell their children, tell their parents they're not <laughs> home, you tell your mom is not home or dad is not home. <laughs> yeah. So mm -hmm. indirectly, what's, what message are we sending to our children? Yep. So we have to be very careful generally what we do and what we teach and how we ourselves are. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu he never taught anybody until until he done something by himself. So he was practical. Um, so coming back to our uh, the point that you know we have to give importance to children. We need to understand that children they also are intelligent. At times, some of the opinions that they can give or some of the ideas they can give, which maybe we, we fail to understand. And our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he would seek uh, uh, advice from this junior Sahaba عنهم, junior companions like Abdullah ibn Umar, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud the young yeah, Sahaba young, young junior mm. Sahaba and he would take them importantly and seriously but unfortunately we have a um, tendency in our society where we undermine or we look at the children as insignificant uh, you know uh, what, what are you going to understand you're still young enough to you're understand still, you know, what do you understand so we have to uh, give them some sense of like you know uh, value and and, and, importance. And, and and importance, so that they feel that they you know they're also important uh, part or uh, you know uh, pillar of the society. Pillar, pillar of the society. Um, just to add a little bit there, do we not see in some of the masajid, not all, yeah. some <laughs> of the masajid, yes. they will as soon as they see children in the first row. Somehow the way or the tone that's been led, maybe the the, elder, the intention is not there, yep. but the way the word or the message come across to mm. the children, it's like they are being bit harsh or harsh, bit harsh yes. or, or tone to, you shouldn't be standing here, you shouldn't be standing yes. at the back. I mean, I have seen that this is, uh, I think uh, it goes back to, back to also our culture, like some of the cultures, mm. they um, do not prefer children to be the in the mosque row. or uh, generally in, uh, the, the front rows or in the mosque uh, simply because they think that you know they will be disturbing the salah but uh, uh, what sometimes sometimes like you know uh, certain things may seem disturbance to us but they're okay like prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he used to pray and, and, and the children were around him. Hmm. Even some of the children, they used to come and play with him while he's praying. So it's not always what we think is khushu'ah, is khushu'ah, but children are an important part of society. And unless we take them to masajid, unless we take them to the house of Allah, where will they go? Where are they going to go? Because masajid is an environment, mosques are an environment where malaika angels are there, good people are there, past people are there. So they need to start learning. So I think we need to uh, change this kind of mentality a little bit and we need to start welcoming and admiring our children. I mean, every time I see a child in the mosque, I say, good to see you in the masjid. Mm. Subhanallah, this is what I do. I, I, and even I try to sometimes carry some sweets. So if is I see a child, yeah, children? to encourage them. And, mm. and, and I give those sweets um, you know, to children in the mosque. 
so that they know that when they're in the mosque, within the building of the mosque, they're been looked after and they've been taken care of. And that's really, really important. And I saw these, um, uh, th th these kind of uh, good qualities in many, uh, amongst many uh, Arabs, Muslims. Uh, when I was in Egypt, I remember an uncle like Al-Hajj or al -Hajj Sab, um, he used to keep like a, f a, a big uh, pack, a pack of, of sweets. As soon as you would see a child, he would give a, a small sweet from his, mm. from his pack. And, and um, namely, he would give in the, in the masjid, in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to take our children importantly and seriously and don't forget <coughs> they understand everything. And as I was saying earlier, the modern technology says that you know, children can hear even while in their mother's womb. Indeed, and and that's proven. And I remember, like um, when I was young, I used to hear uh, the Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, If you've heard of his name, yes. he was a very famous saint, Wali of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, who's from Baghdad, from Iraq. Uh, people used to say that he memorized a big portion of the Quran, the Holy Quran, while he was in his mother's womb. Many people re were reluctant to accept that, but when the modern technology proves that children can listen while inside their mothers. Some scholars, they come to uh, an understanding that, you know, it is possible. It may be possible because a mother, while constantly reciting the Holy Quran, this can give a child some sort of, you know, uh, memory or, or, or the memorization of the Holy Quran. And when they're out, they can, I mean, it is possible. Uh, th that's what uh, the bottom line is. Now, now look, let's look at the other way around. Mm -hmm. If, inshallah, science and technology, they st it's still being under research. A mm -hmm. lot of things are being under research. But inshallah, if one day it becomes a scientific evidence could mm. be if used as a fact then we all have to accept it exactly now yeah. mm. what's the other way around if a mother or a father yes. constantly indulging in the musical music instruments and, and yes, other things it has direct effect on our children simply and we see the most of the pious people who became the real true awliya and the scholars of islam the pious predecessors you look at their mothers you have to look at their parents how their parents were if the parents are 100%, then you will expect the children to be at least 90%. But sometimes the exception also Obviously, no. Obviously, exceptions are always there. Mm. But we're talking generally because we had even like Ambiya, the sons of like, you know, uh, the, no, the disbelievers. Salam, disbelievers. Uh, so we have also vice versa, but we're talking obviously generally. So coming back to our discussion, I have, I think we, our time is very limited. So we need to make sure that our children are eating good, healthy food. They're in healthy environment and they're also in a spiritual atmosphere. So we try and keep them in an Islamic environment as much as possible because we are naturally influenced by our society. And so Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said in the hadith that, uh, uh, you know, al-mar'u ala deeni khalili. A person's religion depends on, the, on, on his friends, on the religion of his friends. If his friends are good, then his religion will be good. And if his friends are corrupt, then his religion would be corrupt. So, al-mar'u ala deeni khalilihi fal yanzur ma'a man yukhalil. So, this is a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Um, when we were talking about giving them healthy lifestyle, you know, uh, maintaining financially, uh, we I would like to mention a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, where he says in uh, narrated by Al Hakim al Nasai, the kafa bil mar'i ithman an yudayya man yaul. Kafa bil mar'i ithman an yudayya man yaul. It is sufficient seen for a man if he neglects neglects those on whom he is obliged to spend. So we are obliged to spend on our family, on our children, on our wives. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لِيُنْفِقْ ذُو سَعَةٍ مِّن سَعَةٍ وَمَنْ قُدِرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقُهُ فَلْيُنْفِقْ مِمَّا آتَاهُ اللَّهِ That a man must spend on his children, on his family, on his wife, according to his financial capacity. And if he um, couldn't do uh, if he couldn't do enough, then he should do as much as he can. فَلْيُنْفِقْ مِمَّا آتَاهُ اللَّهُ لَا يُكَلِّفُ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا مَا آتَاهَا One other important thing that we need to give Islam, the teachings of Islam to our children from early age, which many of us, we are neglectful. We don't give importance uh, in giving Islam, the teachings of Islam, to our children from early age. When we look at uh, the Western world, you see... The Western world they give uh, uh, a lot of importance to children from very early age. You see, the children they go to nursery and you know uh, the preschool like from the age of three and 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 even probably before that. Indeed, and there's a concept of child development stage. 
Yes, yes. So they need the the parents here that we live in the society we, that we live in. They encourage and they know how important is the different development stages of children. Yes. Yep. And now, in order for us to understand that, now one of the other criteria is both parents need to understand their own respons their responsibility together. Yeah. Because what we do notice culturally that somehow the children sometimes we do notice do not form a strong bonding with their parents with the parents yes now, is it because there's no any the communication is it because there's the negligence in the early stages or yes what other reasons simply there's not much communication or there's not like a that you know friendly relationship with the children which is very very important i mean unless we have a good relationship with our children where would they go and speak about the problems uh you know they would choose uh, the wrong people that we don't wish or want them to speak Correct. to so we have to actually open ourselves slightly so slightly to our children and start listening to them and that is one of the other very important aspect that you have touched upon because especially in today's age and time when we read a lot of children have been involved in a lot of uh, they've been victim of a lot of crimes crimes right? yes. now if as a parent, if we are not friendly to them, and yes, you rightly yes. touched, they are going to share their fear, their concerns with people who might not be within the and, same And they might give wrong advice. And wrong advice. Advice, yeah. So to be slightly more tolerant, that's what I mean. Um, so give Islam in early age. I have seen people are saying, you know, oh, he's still too young. Like, he doesn't have to pray now. Oh, oh so when he still, grows old. Yeah, and he grows old. He's still too young and sometimes people that judge their children according to them probably they started praying late so they would say oh um, so like let's just be a bit kind and merciful with our children but this is not the mercy I remember one of my friends used to say that I used to tell my father to wake me up for Fajr prayer but he would leave for Fajr and he would never, he would never wake me up even though I would ask him every day mm. because he, was, he would he would be in his mind, he's been kind and merciful with his with his son, Correct. but he would he would, he would completely dislikes that, uh, dislike that. So uh, when we look at the hadith of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said in a hadith on the authority of Amr ibn Shu'aib an Abihi an Jaddihi, "Qal, qal Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Muru subyanakum bissala li sab'i sinin, that order your children to pray the salah at the age of seven. Look at the age seven." Even before that, if it's possible, then train them. But seven is a good age to start off with. So Prophet said, Muru subyanakum bis salah li sab'i sinin. They order your children to start praying, perform the salah at the age of seven. وَضْرِبُوهُمْ عَلَيْهَا لِعَشْرِ سِنِينَ And discipline them at the age of ten if they still don't pray. Discipline them, take necessity measurement, and discipline them if they don't pray at the age of Ten of Farrako Bainahum, Filma Vaja, on the third of Abu, Abu uh, Ahmed and Abu Dawood, Rahimahumallah. <coughs> so you can see the Prophet is teaching us here to start training, to start giving tarbiyah to our children from a very early age uh, and not to leave, it, uh, leave the tarbiyah for, for a later stage. Because if we don't shape our children from early age, then don't listen to us. So it's like um, when you make a pot, like, you know put for our, you know, made out of the, uh, the clay. If you don't shape it at the early stage, then when it's proper solid, it will, you, will, you can't shape it, it will break. They're very, very true. Now, we do hear such comments that, as you have rightly mentioned, he's still young, let him grow old, and then he can do anything. Yes. Own. Then my concern would be, why do we not do it with the education? Yeah, Why do we not exactly. say, let and the also, child grow also about and hijab choose as well. whether I mean, he wants to educate himself or not? Exactly. And also with the hijab, like the veil, like you know, hijab. So many, many mothers would say, oh, I have seen how many mothers like they're wearing, mashallah, hijab and they're wearing burqa and they're, they're, they're veil, like, you know, putting veils on themselves. But the, the, the daughters are quite grown up and they're, they're exposed and they're not wearing hijab because, again, some people they have the mentality, oh, they're still young, let them be slightly old, and then they can start wearing the hijab. But we need to understand that we need to start training. I mean, some probably are trying, but we need to start training and convincing our children to uh, follow the commandments of Allah. So again, it falls down onto how can we educate our children, our children yes. that the importance of hijab, yes. the importance of performing salah and the act of ibadah. Yes. Also, giving Islamic education is, is really, really important from early age. We see most of our imams and fuqaha, the jurists and <coughs> early scholars, they memorize the Holy Quran by the age of seven, eight or maximum ten. Mm. Why? Because the early age, uh, there is a saying that al-ilmu fi-sighar so seeking knowledge in an early age 
or memorizing something it's like you are engraving on a stone engraving on a stone and seeking knowledge at the age of adulthood or uh, during the adulthood is like engraving on the water. Indeed, very true. So it's very important that we start, uh, we should give the right education to our children from early age. But one important thing I want to mention, the tendency of our society is that when they uh, hire a teacher for maths or English, they mm. will be happy to pay a lot of money. They wouldn't mind paying 30 pounds per hour, 40 pounds per hour. But when it comes to an Islamic teacher, people will count every penny. Two and a half, two, 250, three pounds, five pounds. So people are constantly like, you know, watching the money that they're paying to the Islamic teachers, mm -hmm. which shows the lack of importance in Islamic education. Now, the other thing, you've rightly, very rightly touched on this subject. I want to also address another subject here. Even the, I've seen some job adverts for imams of masajids. Now, yeah. if you see the money <laughs> that has been advertised yes, there. Yes, 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 yes. Now, how can we then expect the our the good ulama, the qualified ulama and shuyukh will deliver as they're supposed to deliver from the member? Exactly. I mean, I, I, I normally say that, and I, this is my observation, that this is the reason why most of the professional and qualified imams are not in the mosques. Indeed. They don't, they don't remain in the mosques because of the way the imams are, I mean, I know imams also have mistakes. Not all the imams are, 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 are fully uh, you know, angels or perfect. We all make mistakes. Uh, but, uh, you know, the way we value our, I mean, other professions, we actually don't value the, the, uh, the professions of imama and, and khataba and all those things. And if these people are not looked after, is these people then, have not been paid what they're supposed then to they, be? They, they then how can they do their job properly with full concentration? Exactly. So, I mean, I, I hope that this is something that... Uh, would our managements of the Masajid the would understand indeed. the committee member? I mean, the, all the counting and it comes to when, when when it comes to the imams and, and the Islamic Correct. teachers. Yes, indeed. But but people happily pay 30, 40 pounds per hour to the maths teachers, you know, English teachers. I mean, well, that shows wrong. That, yeah, that, there's nothing wrong, but there has to be balance. Balance, indeed. Yeah, I mean, we have to be equal at least, but. Ideally, we should give more priorities to Islamic studies because we said, remember, well, baqiyatu salihat, what remains, what is everlasting is the good deeds that we do, which is beneficial in this world and in the next world. So uh, it's important that we give Islam from early age, which is the prime responsibility of parents as responsible. Uh, and because whatever we give them, this is what they will do after we leave this world. They will represent us. They will keep our identity. So if we give them the good things, then they will keep that. If we give them bad things, then they will also um, keep that. Um, one other important thing that we have to do is that we need to watch our children what they do. Monitor them as much as possible. I don't mean to say that, you know, get into every secret things, but generally keep an eye on them. Many of our parents, like, they don't know where, the ch where their sons are going, they don't know where the daughters are going, and then they regret, and then they cry. Or even Call up the imams, oh, imam, oh, my son <coughs> doesn't listen to me, my daughter, she doesn't come home, she goes somewhere else and she stays overnight, uh, they don't, they're not under our control. What about even in the privacy at home? I mean, door? obviously, the, there's, there are some privacies that we, we are not allowed to get into, uh, and this is from, from our religion, but at the same time, uh, if the children are young, then we keep an eye and we, we generally monitor what they're doing because we don't want them to get into indulge in bad things. And nowadays the gadgets, the small so small devices that, that a child can get uh, into Access to under everything. the blanket and, and he can do or she can do certain things that you can never imagine. So we have to be very, very careful. But I've seen negligence in many parents that they don't care about where the children go. And then they... Uh, cry and they regret after the time is uh, after it's too late so we generally should keep an eye on our children allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the holy quran ya ayyuhalladhina amanu qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara or you who believe protect yourself safeguard yourself uh, and your family from the fire of hell wa ahlikum nara um and also remember we, have, we were talking about paying attention to them giving some time to them. I know we are very busy at this time and age and every one of us we kind of uh, suffer from uh, the lack of time. There's no baraka in our time. But because the children we, uh, we have in a society that they're kind of locked up back home in our countries of countries of origin like children can go they set free they can play they mm -hmm. can do many physical activities but here children are more like locked up in the house in, in the houses. So therefore parents some of the parents they have no 
a realization whatsoever to give and to spend a bit of time with your children. And when you feed your child, when you change probably nappy at times, when you play with them, this creates a bond, a very good bond with the children. Quality children time. get to know you, you get to know the children. This is very quality and, and when you give this time, children, they start liking you, they start loving you from inside, they start loving you. So um, complaints from many mothers and complaints from fathers as well that, you know, the fathers don't spend much time with the children or don't give importance. He's busy with his work, he's busy. As soon as he comes from his work, he starts watching TV, movies, <laughs> and spend like you know, hours and hours and no time for children. I mean, we have to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These children, they have right over us and we have to, our spending our time, you see, imagine like the amount of time they spend in school, like probably eight, nine hours a day and how much time do we spend with them? So you need to be so careful. most of the time a child is spending his outside time outside. The, outside, the, outside the, 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 the touch family. of parents, yes. Um, so... We need to uh, give a bit, of, bit more info, uh, uh, time to them and also uh, make some time for our children to take them to maybe play outside in the parks because physical activities are very important. That what makes them fit, they keep them fit and they get a good sleep. Otherwise, what happens is that the children, they start directing themselves to the gadgets that we're talking about. Mm. Very true. But the other side as well, some parents, especially fathers, they're very tired of the whole week. They have been mm. working and then the weekend they want to rest themselves. So out of the laziness, maybe they, they tend to yeah. not take them to parks or those yeah. kind of things. I mean, I, I know there are challenges, there are difficulties, but if we have that at least awareness, then we'll keep that in our mind and maybe put them in our plan and schedule as well. I would say, well, why don't we put it, it's an investment. What, investment, does, a yes. what does a businessman do? Yes, he investment. Invests, Children are the invested. biggest investment in this world. I mean, that's what, that's what it is. This is the mm -hmm. reality. So they're our investment. So, um, so provide the children with sufficient amount of physical activities. And, um, you know, this should stop them and going them to the to the tabs and phones and and small small gadgets that they're using which is actually causing a lot of distraction i mean not only muslims but many non-muslims they are very worried about these gadgets because what causing distraction they're causing it's it's unbelievable incredible uh, uh you know the dark energies that are coming through the gadgets and what they're watching is mostly actually made and created by the enemies of islam uh, and those who uh, are anti-religion generally, they're the ones who actually make these kind of cartoons and these kind of movies. And the messages are coming all against the morality. So what's the alternative? Yeah, alternative is obviously, first of all, if there are Islamic programs such as like what we're doing now or Islam, we've got good, good channels now, good what Islamic about channels. Islamic cartoons, Islamic machines. cartoons, Islamic entertainments, mm. maybe taking them to Islamic programs, Seminars. Uh, engage them, you know, uh, take them to the mosques, like, you know, wherever the facilities, uh, there, are, there are some massages that they have good facilities for, for, for ladies use, as well as children. Yeah, groups, so take yeah. them to the mosques. So make, generally keep them busy as much as possible which will prevent them or stop them from going to those kind of electronic devices and the last thing that I want to mention the mercy being merciful with children so generally mercy is one of the greatest concept in Islam and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he was merciful and kind <coughs> with everything generally I mean we can see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he never we we can we can't find any example where Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he hit a child uh, Yes, we are allowed. We, we should discipline children, and that's that's okay. But, but there's ways to discipline children. But there's children. ways of doing mm. it, and and we me, we must not, uh, you know, uh, fulfill our anger and our frustration, uh, uh, frustration yeah, on, children. Uh, on children and hating them and beating them. We have stress outside. We might have stress at work. We might have stress with our, our spouses. But that shouldn't. They must not go to our children. It is haram oppression, zulm to do that. And the other aspect of it as well, if there is any tension between spouses, any kind of differences with the spouses, is it not important to keep the differences outside the children's uh, Children's view? world, yes, yes. Very important. Child's, like, you know, when we make a scream, a shout, in child's world, it's a very big thing. Indeed. When we, be, like, a, when, you, when we hit a child, in child's world, it's a very big thing. And that kind of 
keep the, the effects stay throughout the, throughout the whole entire life. We have seen children who are abused quite badly in, during the childhood. Mm. This, uh, this, the effects of abuse is, is there even in, during, throughout the adulthood. And the science uh, confirms that as of well. Of course, and, this, and that's the reason why Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Anas bin Malik Khadim Rasulillah, the, the servant Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that I haven't seen anyone more merciful than Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the children. So, yes. so the mercy with the children was great, uh, the mercy of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Jazakallah Khair Shaykh, we are coming towards the end of the program. I know there's a lot more to discuss and cover, but obviously due to the shortage of time we couldn't. But inshallah in our future um, episode, we'll, I'll definitely, we'll definitely discuss more about this particular topic. Just before we end, in 30 seconds, we did not touch upon giving a good name to the children. Yeah, obviously, yeah, this is just part of a good tarbiyah, that as soon as a child is born, we should give them a good name. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the best names are Abdullah and Abdul Rahman, or the, the names of the Anbiya, the Prophets and Sahaba. Because a lot of time we do notice from other Islamic programs and from other messages that parents generally ask the meaning of the uh, the meaning of the name of the child once they've already kept it. Yes. Now, how important is it to find out the meaning first before keeping it, rather before, than later? Before we we decide a name for our child, we we should research. We should make a research by ourselves and ask the the, uh, the people of knowledge, okay. and keep a good name because a name has a direct effect on a person person character. Exactly. So we should keep a good name, inshallah. Thank you, thank you very much. Perhaps we can talk about child abuse in our next program. Inshallah, we will in yeah, our future talk episode, inshallah. Mm -hmm. With this, my dear viewers, we have come to the conclusion of our tonight's program. We have been discussing today, our topic was nurturing children. We have touched upon a very important aspect here and a couple of things that we have learned here that there is a responsibility that we have towards our children and they would be a source of salvation in the hereafter. And let us remind ourselves, let us not forget that the, the barometers, the criteria that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set for us in this world that we will be accountable for. We should ensure that we take it seriously and we should also ensure that our children are protected, nurtured and given a proper Islamic tarbiyah at the same time give them the proper education. Just to summarize if I can, what well, we have discussed, some of the um, um, responsibilities, some of the role that we can play. A, we can give them a good name first as the Sheikh has mentioned, we have to ensure the child's the name of the meaning before we keep the name uh, for our child. The second is we have to spend appropriate time with our children, which means quality time, even if it's a meal together. The third point we can say is treating our children fairly. We should not see a difference between our son and daughter. All our children need to be treated equally. Number four, we should treat our children with full love and mercy as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam has commanded. And finally, we should provide our children with right education. When I say right education, it means they should be fully aware and understanding towards the huququllah, the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, towards the huququl ibad, the rights of fellow human being. And the third, the other important element is how to lead a lawful life. All of this, inshallah, we'll try and inculcate in our habit and instill these qualities in our children's lifestyle. With this, we come to the conclusion of our tonight's program. Inshallah, looking forward to see you in our future episode. Till we meet again, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa tubi ilayk, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, Sheikh. Zatullah khairan, barakallahu alaikum.